Hello, hello, hello. I know it's been a little bit of time since the last uh, Tasty Trade uh, dev tutorial video, but uh, I've been a little bit busy. I am trying to start my own consultancy firm, so sorry, the free videos take a little bit of a backburn to that. Anyway, Tasty Trade has sunset DX feed for their open API and have shifted to using DX link. In this video, we'll make the appropriate changes to our library and discuss how to use the new DX link feed. And personally, I think you're going to like it because I love it. It makes my life a whole heck of a lot easier. Bad news. All the work we did with the original asynchronous DX feed code is now completely useless to us. Good news. The new DX link code makes way more sense for what we're doing. Before we rewrite the DX feed code for DX link, let's go over web sockets briefly. Terminology wise, a socket is a lot like a phone call. You dial out to someone and have a two way conversation with them. A WebSocket is basically that. It lets you stream data between two endpoints without having to do any asynchronous calls on your part. It's called a WebSocket because it uses the underlying concept of a socket connection, specifically the Berkeley Sockets API, and overlays that on the modern web using HTTPS as its intermediary between the client and the server. In short, it's a connection between two machines that stays open and handles transferring data. When you're ready to send data, you simply tell the socket what you're sending, and the other end of the connection will receive the data. When there's data to receive, the socket will tell you that it has data, then you read it and do whatever you want with it. So with that out of the way, our DX link code is going to look a lot like our TT WebSocket code, but we need to make a change to our core API call first. We will no longer be calling fetch DX feed token method in the TT API class. Instead, we'll write this new method, get quote tokens, which will fetch the API quote tokens that we'll need to establish a WebSocket connection with DX link. In DX link, when we create the new object, we need to pass it a URI and auth token just like the previous DX feed implementation. What we're interested in is the connect method because we can drop the AIO comment D stuff. Instead, we're now just creating a standard WebSocket connection. That's all we have to do to get this to function the way we need it to. No library hacking, no deep diving into why a configuration isn't being made, just a plain, simple WebSocket connection. Obviously, the URL parameter is the URL we'll be connecting to and the on underscore parameters are the methods we'll use to handle certain events. Also, we're throwing the run forever function into a separate thread just to make life easier. You don't have to worry about it. It's just a way to avoid having to deal with blocking versus non-blocking sockets. Just don't run this code on a single core processor, I guess. The first method we're going to look at is on underscore open. This gets triggered when the socket successfully connects to the endpoint. According to the documentation, the first action we should take is to send a setup command. Every DX link command has a type followed by various sets of data. Each command, except for the auth command, also expects a channel. Channel 0 is reserved for protocol data, while all other channels can be configured to receive quote data. Setup expects the following. Keep alive timeout, which is an integer which their example shows as being 60 seconds, so that's what I went with. Accept keep alive timeout, which is an integer which is shown using 60 seconds, so that's what I'm using. I also don't know what this is for or what the difference between this and keep alive timeout is exactly. You can RTFM all you want, but the documentation doesn't mention anything. Then there's version. This is a string which represents which version of the protocol you're attempting to use, I'm assuming. The real life example provided by DXLink is an outright lie. As of this recording, the proper version is not 1.0.0, but 0.1. Once you send the setup command, you'll get an acknowledgement of type setup. This will basically repeat the data you sent it with a much more specific version number. After you've successfully set up the connection, you must authenticate. We do this with the auth type, which takes one parameter, token, which is your streamer token you got earlier from the Tasty Trade API. As of version 0.1, you'll get two auth acknowledgements. The first one will return a state of unauthorized, and if you use the correct token, the second one will return a state of authorized. I don't know what that's about exactly, but I think this is a bit of a bug in the 0.1 release of DXLink. It doesn't make sense to be told you're not authorized to authenticate, but then fully authenticate you. I'd look for this to get fixed in a future release. You're also going to get a user ID. I'm not wholly sure what this does or what its purpose is, but I just append it to the end of every command I send from here on out. Again, it's not mentioned in the documentation at all, so 
just run with it, I guess. Now that we're authenticated, we just need to worry about keeping the connection alive, which I still don't really understand why we need to run a Keep Alive or a Heartbeat packet. It's not like we're on a UDP connection. We're running on a WebSocket that will destroy itself if the connection is lost, but hey, that's life. So here's a cool thing about DXLink. They automatically send you Keep Alive packets at specific intervals. All you need to do in your on underscore message method is check to see if you've received a Keep Alive packet, then simply send one back. That's enough to keep the connection alive. It's like the old IRC ping pong messages. I just don't understand why we need to do it when we're not on a connection with Socket. If anyone knows why this exists in DXLink and the Tasty Trade WebSocket code, could you leave me a comment or tweet me? It just kind of confuses me considering all the layers of connectivity WebSockets are built on. Okay, now that we have authenticated a connection, we need to set up a channel. Channels are another concept I don't particularly get here, but eh, oh well. To set up a channel, we send type channel underscore request with an as of yet unused channel number, the service type, which is in almost every instance set to feed, and one parameter, contract, which can be set to auto. You can set this to ticker, history, or stream. If the server can accommodate you, you'll get the channel underscore opened acknowledgement, which will echo back your settings and also include a subformat parameter of list. I think this is telling you the type of data to expect, but I'm unsure if this is something you can set or if it changes or not. Again, the documentation here is lacking. You actually get the channel underscore opened command returned twice, no clue why, but this is likely related to what happened with the authentication method we used earlier. Now we can subscribe to various DX link events, which are practically the exact same as DX feed events. We just need to send a feed underscore subscription message on our established channel and tell DX link what we want using a list of dictionaries. In this example, we're requesting real-time quote prices for PayPal. In response, we'll get the feed underscore config acknowledgement, which tells us the channel we're using, the data format, full or compact, aggregation period, which I have no clue what this represents and can't find any mention of it on the DX feed or DX link documentation, and event fields. Event fields is the same data we received prior from DX feed, just sent to us in a shiny new WebSocket connection. Each DX link type, quotes, trade, Greeks, etc., has a different field layout, so it's helpful to have this data so you can shove it into a dictionary and worry about it when you get the actual data you're waiting for. Except it's not, so we'll get to that in a second. Again, you'll get feed config twice. Uh, again, I'm not sure why. I'm going to chalk this up to the 0.1 release being a little buggy. From there, you'll constantly receive your data. It'll come in feed underscore data messages. Here's what I really enjoy about DX link. The actual feed data is fed to you as a dictionary, so you don't need to track the data types like the feed config sent to you. It's fantastic. Right now, the Greeks data type doesn't work, and I'm pretty sure this is because they haven't added equity options yet. Their email assures us they're working diligently to add it, but for right now, we're limited to basically price quotes on the underlying. This is all fantastic for us because it really simplifies our code a lot. We no longer have to deal with the AIO comma decode. We don't have to work asynchronously with the DX feed data. It's all just fed to us in a nice, neat WebSocket connection. And that's it. I know this is a shorter video, and we didn't go into too much depth or too much detail, but this was just sort of thrust on me on a Monday night, and I said, well, I may as well start working on it, so here we are. Um, thanks for watching. I really appreciate it. If you could like, subscribe, comment, give me a follow on Twitter. I'm at one lot Jason. Join our Discord where we have a really helpful, really friendly community where we just want to we just want to help you uh, learn how to develop, learn how to trade. Uh, we don't ask any money, uh, no subscriptions, nothing like that. I, I hate that stuff, and I'm sure you hate it too. Uh, we really appreciate it. And uh, listen, I'm trying to start a consulting business as well. So if you guys, uh, you guys need any consultation services on the tech end of things or trading end of things, uh, hit me up. I work in Python, Node.js, Java, whatever you guys need. Uh, I'm OneLawJason, and we'll see you next time.